19 says, the heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament or the dome proclaims his handiwork. And then the Psalm goes on to say that even though the heavens proclaim and declare their words are not intelligible. They're not delivered in a human language yet. Their words go out through all the earth and their voice to the ends of the earth. So creation has a voice that declares the glory of God. And then the Psalm goes on to talk about in the heavens, God has place the sun and the sun runs its course throughout the day with joy like a strong man running its course and nothing is hid from its heat and then from there we make a transition from the natural phenomena of God's glory in creation to a specific revelation of God, the revelation of God's law. So we move from the revelation of God in creation to the revelation of God in specific words to the law that God has given us. And there are a number of words that the Psalm uses to talk about the law. The law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are simple, are sure, making wise the simple. And then the commandments of the Lord and the ordinances of the Lord and the fear of the Lord. And it says that all of these are to be desired more than gold. They're also sweeter than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. So the psalm moves from um, the general revelation of God in creation to the specific revelation of God in his words or in his law, from sort of unintelligible language to intelligible language that humans can hear and understand. And this law of intelligibility is revealed in the midst of this phenomena of creation. Now, when we see the Exodus text, Exodus 20, 1 through 20, that's the text that recounts the giving of the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments are very specific um, ordinances that God gave the people Israel through Moses. And they can roughly be divided into two parts where you have the first five dealing with how the people are to love the Lord their God. And the second five roughly with how the people are to love their neighbors as themselves. And these specific ordinances are given in a context of, again, this phenomena of creation around the people. So they come to the mountain and the mountain is smoking. Uh, there's a fire on the mountain and the, the mountain is wrapped in smoke. And there's a sound as loud as a trumpet. And it's in the midst of all of this phenomena, this voice of creation, that then this voice of God in intelligible language is spoken to Moses, and Moses communicates it to the people. So again, here we have this movement from the general revelation to a specific revelation. Now, in the Matthew story from today's readings, Matthew 21, 33 through 46, Jesus tells a parable again. We've been dealing with parables over the last several weeks. 
And this parable is about, again, an owner who plants a vineyard and does a lot of work to prepare this vineyard. And he leases it to tenants, and he expects that the tenants, tenants will produce fruit. And so at, at the right time, um, the owner of the vineyards sends some servants to go collect the produce from the tenants, but the tenants, uh, they, they kill the servants, they beat the servants, they stone the servants. And then finally, the owner of the vineyard says, I'll send my son, the, and surely they'll respect my son. And so he sends the son into the vineyard, and they seize the son, and they throw him out of the vineyard, and they kill him. But it is this very son whom the owner of the vineyard sends into the vineyard. It is this very heir of the father, heir of God, the very representative of God on earth, whom God sends into creation that becomes a new foundation for whomever will follow God's law and put their trust in him. So here again in this parable, we have this sense of a very specific entity, the son, the embodiment of God's word, God's law, the one who perfectly fulfills the law of the love of God and neighbor who is sent into the vineyard, who is sent into the garden, who is sent into creation. And he is there revealed in the midst of creation, in the eyes of all people, as God's appointed heir. And even though he is rejected and mistreated, he becomes the source for a new creation for all people who will put their trust in him. So here again, too, we have a very specific revelation given in the midst of the general revelation of creation. Now, it is also this beloved son then that the apostle Paul speaks about in the Philippians passage. And this son of God was also born under the law, born under a woman, born of a woman. He was like Paul, who speaks of himself in Philippians, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was zealous for the law and to do what was right by the law. And he perfectly fulfilled the law. But Paul, even though Paul was also striving to fulfill the law and had all of his pride in the law and in his um, identity as a follower of the law, yet he said he desired nothing more in all of creation than simply to be found in this son, to be found in Christ and to know him and to attain to the resurrection of Jesus and to have all of his righteousness and all of his identity come from this son of God who perfectly and completely embodied the law of God revealed to the people of Israel. And so it was for Paul, and it may be for us, that Jesus Christ himself is to be desired more than gold, even much fine gold,
because he is sweeter to us also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Amen.